Hey, here's a here's a burger recipe for you uh, meat lovers. It's got some bacon in it, mushroom. Uh, I'm thinking about throwing a little cheddar in there, although I'm iffy on that. And I'll show you the other ingredients right now. Okay, right now I'm starting off with some bacon. I'm only making three burgers, so I don't need a whole lot of bacon. I had seven strips laying around. It was perfect. So I, I prefer to put it in the oven. Putting it in the pan means I have to watch it, and it's a pain in my ass. So heat up your oven. Throw it in there. Okay, now I don't want this bacon completely cooked, so I'm going to set my timer for about mm, nine minutes. Usually in about 10 to 15 minutes, the bacon's getting pretty done. I don't want it to get too done. So now I'm going to chop up uh, three mushrooms and a couple of large cloves of garlic. You guys get the uh, cutting board eye view of this operation here. Okay, get off those little woody parts there. If you got any green tails, you don't want them on there, man, I'm telling you now. The way I process garlic is I go longwise first, making paper thin slices. I'm not in a real big hurry, so I'm not racing along right now. A bunch of paper thin slices this way, right? And I stack that baby back up and I work it slicing it the other way. It's easier if I go this way. Okay. Now I got a lot of really long slivers of garlic. That sound you hear is the dog drinking a gallon of water. Okay, and then I mince them very, very small. This way. This way, you've got lots of little tiny pieces of garlic without a lot of work. Mm, looking at it, that's actually, I think that's more than enough garlic for the. Oh, she was still drinking. Okay. More than enough garlic. Okay. Put that out of there. Now, mushroom, same thing, take off that dry woody part. Uh, processing all the mushrooms rapidly. These are also going to get sliced very, very thin. And then I'm going to mince them up. into the burger. So I don't want the pieces very large. And so on and so forth. So we'll get those minced up. I'll show you the rest of it in a minute. Okay, so what I got here is a couple mushrooms, large cloak of garlic, all minced up, kind of scattered around. Okay. What I got here, I don't know if you can even see, is a nice sized pinch of salt pinch of black pepper, and here's some Mrs. Dash, which has all kinds of crap in it, okay, but it does not have salt in it. Then, to that, I'm going to add, so there's this smattering of breadcrumbs, okay, because that bacon, once I crumble that bacon in there, it's going to be pretty greasy, all right, and the idea is, is I want to mix everything around in here first. Then, when I shake it out, I get a more random distribution, okay? You're wondering, what in the world is he doing? He's seasoning a cutting board. Now, I'm going to lay this meat on top of it. This is a, a pound of meat. Make three burgers out of it. I'd be struggling with that. It looks so flimsy. Strangely resilient. All right. The meat. Yes, look at that. No pink ooze in it. Nice, nice freshly ground whatnot. What I like to do is I like to break it apart over this. And press it into it and then flip it over and press it into it and just keep working it around and around. You can also sprinkle it on top of it. It doesn't matter as long as it all gets in there. I'm gathering it up. 
we want to make sure that it's all through the whole meat. So there's quite a bit of this churning and mixing type of thing going on so that you get a good distribution. Okay. Don't be lazy about it. You get a big clump of salt or pepper or whatever in one spot. Okay. Yeah, you can see there's a whole lot here and not much there. By the time I get done doing this for another, you know, I'd say I spend two, three minutes doing this. Which I will not bore you with. But then the final magic ingredient, a little Worcestershire, which I just sprinkle on top. I do not go crazy with it, just a little bit. Again, if it gets on the cutting board, no problem, because I'm working the cutting board. I'm working every square inch of it eventually, right? Alright, we'll get back to this in a minute, and I will show you what we've got ready for the bacon. The bacon is starting to smell like... It's time to check it out. Okay, we got some bacon. This bacon is as done as I want it to be. As you saw, I had it in there for about nine minutes. And what you get is pretty well cooked, but not entirely cooked. What I'm going to do is uh, scoop them on out of there, get them on the cutting board. Once again, the cutting board, the all-purpose cutting board. It is now a bacon draining zone. Mm -hmm. Once those cool down a little bit, I will chop them into very small pieces. Yes, bacon. Bacon will be chopped up and inserted into the burger. So the whole thing is internal, man. It's very sneaky. Mushroom bacon burger that you can't even see the mushrooms or the bacon. What is that all about? We will get back to this in a minute. All right, once again, we'll give you the cutting board eye view of uh, a little bacon processing. my meat a little bit here and crumble some bacon in there and then a little in there a little here a little there we'll fold it over itself put in a little more okay. now you bacon accountants that would like to know that you were getting exactly two and one third strips of bacon in your burger, well, I'm sorry, we're just not going to be that particular about it. You get the bacon you get, maybe you got more, maybe you get less, maybe you all get the same. It's American now. If you don't like how you're getting your bacon, do something about it. Make your own damn bacon burgers. Alright, now, see this is, now you can start to see why I wanted to put some breadcrumbs in there, and also why I left the breadcrumbs out because it's probably a good thing to put a little bit more of that in there. Grab that. A little more breadcrumb action. I was light on the breadcrumbs because I didn't want it very bready, but it is quite oily now. Okay. All right. I'm going to work this a bunch. To get everything totally mixed around. It's starting to feel a little drier now. That's better. Okay. So I need both my hands to do this. And I will show you the results of my mixology in a minute. Okay, so I formed up the patties. Uh, got everything pretty well distributed and mixed through it, right? Next thing I like to do is I like to get the pan heating up for about three or four minutes so that when I put water on it, it sizzles. Okay. I'm take my lovely Williams and Sonoma spatula here that I love so much. And you want to hear the sizzle. All right? It's not sizzling. Like that. Right. 
What I like to do is I like to sear them. So I let it go. A medium heat like this, hot, for five minutes. Get one whole side seared. And I flip it over. And I let it go a couple minutes on medium like that. Then I turn the heat down and I put a pan lid over it. Because my family doesn't like bloody pink meat. If you like bloody pink meat, just burn each side and eat it, man. You'll be happy. I'll show you more of this. Done. Hey, it's been about five minutes. Long enough, eh? Let's see what they look like. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Perfect. There you go. Now, because this pan just gets hotter and hotter and hotter all the time, that's why I turn it down. I'm getting a good sear on it right now. But shortly, I'll turn it down, put a lid on it. And have two burger sides like that with a lot of juicy, wonderful stuff inside. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Mountain Star with your views. Leave a comment.